when I crafted my proposal, I made sure in terms of addressing feasibility that I went to a country where I spoke at least one of the languages um, that were official. So either one of the minority languages or one of the um, majority languages. Um, I came to realize that that's actually not that important. <laughs> Um, in terms of what's important um, for the application process and in terms of the Watson Foundation assessing whether it's feasible or not, it's, it's almost budget is more important because I actually, um, in terms of my project, initially said I want to go to Spain, Morocco, Switzerland, and Taiwan. And in my proposal, I very much developed why um, I spoke, I studied Italian, so <coughs> Switzerland would work, and Spain. Actually, they told me even at the interview, um, it's only $25,000 for a year. Half a year in Europe may not work. Would you be willing to adjust your project? And ultimately, that is what I had to do. I, had to, I only spent two months in Europe for my Watson, and then I added Turkey. I added, um, I added uh, yeah, certain countries where I didn't necessarily speak the language very well. So then it's honestly the way I dealt with it was through translators. And in one, in my very first country, which was Mexico, I spoke Spanish, but the the minority language that I was looking in, into was uh, it's was Mayan Sotzil in southern Mexico, and clearly I didn't speak it. But I paid um, for private classes, and I went to a because part of my project was looking into what was what were NGOs doing to pr promote and preserve this language. So my main contact ended up being my teacher, my Tzotzi teacher, who on the side was also a documentary filmmaker who, in, who invited me to, to go to a filming um, at, a, at a TV show where it was done completely in this, in this language, in my Tzotzi. So I went to like the screening. And in the end, it, it's, it, you can use money for anything. Um, so it could be for interpreters, for classes. Um, but in terms of feasibility, that's actually not a central issue. Um, for, for the foundation, as long as you justify in other ways how you can do some research. Most academics um, speak English, so that's usually all right for the initial contact. Honestly, and let's see if it changed from year to year. And at the conference that I went to, there was one, one fellow that had gone to 32 countries. And when you go to Europe, so sometimes it's easier, but had gone to many, many countries. Um, some people, split it around two, but I would say on average, there's usually five to seven. Yeah. Um, and there are people who go to a ton. I mean, one of my friends who did it, she was into, uh, it was like ecosystems that are on the on borders of countries and how those get preserved, you know, where there's, where both countries need to be involved. So she went to like 24 countries. Um, I found that my experience was much better the longer I stayed. So I was originally gonna just stay, I was originally gonna go to four, and I was gonna stay, you know, two and a half months in Trinidad, and that wasn't quite enough. I wanted to, you know, I, I was just understanding Creole a month in, and so I wanted to be able to spend more time there. And same with Argentina, I stayed six months in Argentina. Um, and my least valuable experience was the two months at the end I stayed in Lithuania because A, I didn't speak the language, so even though all young Lithuanians speak English and I could carry out my project, it wasn't, as fulfilling of an experience when I was forcing them to communicate to me in my language and I couldn't just interact with them naturally and hear how they'd express themselves to each other. And um, it was only two months, so I didn't get to integrate myself quite as well. So, I mean, that's something you have to balance too. They're not gonna, you know, they're not gonna, if you have a reason for going to 20 countries, that's fine. Um, but if your project is something where you wanna really integrate yourself into communities, two or three is more feasible.